Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 23. And in this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about the unique topography found in the plains and talk about why that tends to result in a plethora of significant hail events compared to say other parts of the world. So that's the main thing that we're gonna focus on here. And this is where we take a look at a feature called the elevated mix layer or EML, which is the technical term for it. If you read any SPC forecast discussions, you'll occasionally hear them refer to this if you get a potential hail event occurring over the plains or a potential severe weather event. And this stems from the fact that we have the Rocky Mountains to our west and we have nice flat land to the east of the Rockies. And ideally on a nice hot summer day, uh, you've got really strong heating, and we'll talk more about this when we talk about the atmospheric boundary layer, which will be the topic of the next lecture. But if you've got really strong heating occurring, then you're going to have, you're basically going to wind up with a very steep lapse rate, about one to two kilometers above ground level. So down here over in the plains, when you subject the plains to uh, continuous sunlight, to a lot of solar radiation, that tends to give you uh, some very steep lapse rates in the lowest one to two kilometers above ground level. And if you apply the same logic to the mountainous region, that is the Rockies, then you're going to again have very steep lapse rates occurring about one to two kilometers above ground level. So this is going to give you sort of a thermodynamic profile that looks like this. So the temperature decreases very rapidly right on top of the Rockies, and the temperature decreases very rapidly one to two kilometers above the plains. And and ideally, on a nice severe uh, weather setup, you're going to have a strong west or southwesterly wind uh, that's going to actually blow this air, take this air on top of the Rockies, and bring it out over the plains. So you're going to take all the steep lapse rates that are on top of the mountains and bring them out over the plains, and that's going to give you a sort of a profile that looks like this. And this interface between the two air masses is typically referred to as the cap, and this is a region where uh, the temperature is relatively hot. So here you have, uh, if you follow the uh, if you follow the temperature as you go up in the atmosphere, temperature decreases very rapidly. Then you hit this cap where the temperature spikes, and then the temperature decreases very rapidly again as you go as you go beyond the cap. And if you look at a sounding, ideally when you see something like this, this is what it's going to look like on a sounding. Temperature decreases very rapidly, a sudden increase in temperature, which again is the, what we refer to as a cap, which is a layer of warm air that sits above the ground, and then the temperature decreases very rapidly above the cap. And Ideally, uh, what you want to get is you want to get some strong synoptic scale, or uh, moderate to strong synoptic scale lifting, which will take this region of warm air and lift it upwards. Uh, by lifting this cap, you're going to make it cooler and weaken it, which means uh, your thunderstorms are going to have a much higher chance of punching through the cap and becoming very explosive updrafts. Because with this layer of warm air in place, if you try to lift an air parcel, it's going to encounter, encounter a very stable a uh, stable layer of air here, so it's not going to be able to uh, it's not going to be able to lift the level, uh, reach the level of free convection where it becomes unstable. Whereas if you weaken this cap, if you cool this cap down while still maintaining this really intense lapse rate, then you've got thunderstorm updrafts that are unimpeded. They will punch through the cap and they will be very explosive. And if you've got a nice thunderstorm updraft in the region of very steep lapse rates, again eight to ninety degrees C per kilometer under an ideal circumstance. Uh, those updrafts are going to be very explosive. They're going to go up, and they're going to go up rapidly. And of course, as we've seen, those strong mid-level lapse rates uh, are a source of uh, potentially a significant hail event. Those uh, supercell thunderstorms, if you have supercells, uh, will be producing some very massive hail. So this is more of a sort of a broad overview of why the plains actually tends to host some of the most significant hail events uh, out of anywhere in the world. And the reason why is largely due to the fact that we have this unique topography. You have the Rocky Mountains, which is generating these strong mid or these steep mid-level lapse rates. And then the westerly winds then brings this air over the plains and you still have really steep mid-level lapse rates as this air is coming out over the plains. And if you get a thunderstorm that bridges through the cap, it's going to be having a very explosive updraft, which will be capable of supporting some sizable hail. But that's going to do it for this segment on the elevated mix layer. Again, just a look at how the unique topography of the plains uh, plays a very unique role in severe weather setups. And uh, in, the next in the next segment, we're going to take a look at some of the features in the atmosphere that we look for when diagnosing flash flooding events. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.